I'm John Day, I'm a writer and critic and academic, and I'm a judge of, I have been a judge of the 2016 Man Booker Prize. Being asked to be a, a Man Booker judge, it felt a bit like being asked to kind of join MI5, you are sort of quietly tapped up behind the scenes. And um, uh, I've been writing book reviews for um, a number of years, and um, it was on the back of that kind of critical work, I think, that I was asked to. I mean, the panel is composed of diff read it, uh, you know, people who are interested in books, but all bring a certain different kind of expertise or background to the role. So David Harson is a poet and, and novelist and librettist, um, and uh, Olivia Williams, one of our other judges, is an actor and was very interested in, um, I suppose, the performative nature of, of novels sometimes. Abdul Razak Gurna is a novelist himself and teaches at um, University 2. And our chair, Amanda Foreman, is a, is a historian. And so having these different approaches to reading, what a novel is, what it can be, and what it can do in the world was a really fascinating part of that experience. We read somewhere around 150, 160 novels in about six months, which equates to a book a day. And that is both kind of intellectually and almost physically exhausting. But it's also that at the end of the process, coming up with the winner, having these discussions about what the best novel of the year might be, um, kind of occludes all that work in one way. You know, you've, 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 you've read a lot and, and, and at the end you're left with a, a short list of books that you want to evangelise for, but there are many other books obviously that you might want to have conversations about along the way. So I was surprised by how, um, how kind of emotionally laborious I found that process. Another uh, distinct thing about the Man Booker Prize is, is not only that all the judges read all of the submissions, um, but that our list is then um, exposed to greater scrutiny. So between the long list and the short list, we reread all 13 novels. And then after the short list, we obviously reread all of those, the six novels on our short list. And in a sense, that one of the criteria by which we were discussing how we might answer the question of um, a book's quality is whether it would bear that kind of scrutiny. Um, so in, in assembling our long list, I think we were interested in books that um, we saw the potential to um, uncover new meanings within, new, new subtleties and depths. And um, that process continued throughout our discussions in the shortlist. In a sense, I think it's, it's an unusual thing to require of a book. Um, there aren't many books that can sustain and indeed reward that level of scrutiny. And the distinction between a first encounter with a novel, which for many readers will be a last encounter too, and living with a book and thinking about it in all sorts of ways in relation to the other books on the list, made for a very kind of dynamic and um, complicated conversation. One of the great difficulties we had as a panel was, was um, I mean, our verdict was unanimous. We all loved Paul Beatty's book, um, but we had serious conversations about what other books we loved um, on that shortlist, and, I th and it took us a while to have that conversation. It wasn't a, a dead cert, um, really, at any stage, I don't think. And that's, that was quite remarkable, I think. Um, it's not what I expected to happen. It's an extraordinary book in all sorts of ways. Um, it's, I think it has a great anarchic, satirical pow power that, that, that Beattie, Beattie doesn't consider it to be a satire. I know he's, he's, he's spoken about this. But I think what's kind of remarkable from my perspective is that, the, that he managed to find a subject, a, 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 um, um, a theme and, and a set of ideas and indeed a style that came together to be profoundly shocking um, in an age where we feel kind of unshockable in, 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 in one way or another, not in terms of its subject matter even particularly, but in terms of what it does with that, that subject matter. It challenges you almost on every page to ask why you might read a book like this, why you might write a book like this, and what a book like this might do in the wider world. It's a book that's both very much of its place and of its time in the sense of the kind of the microscopic focus almost of, of Los Angeles, that it, um, which is its setting, and, and, and some of the themes might be said to be, you know, uh, particularly relevant to American readers. But I think like all great satire, all great humorous satirical writing, 
it uses those specificities and, 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 and um, that kind of laser-like focus on the local to, to challenge universal assumptions about, in this case, segregation and racism. And um, I think those finding you know, the world in a grain of sand in the way that Beattie does in this novel is a, an extraordinary achievement.